Welcome to today's podcast. This is Peggy Meyer, and today's guest is Eva Medelec. So Eva is a certified high-performance coach, an international speaker, number one best-selling author, and a certified diversity and inclusion communications trainer. She believes that we cannot achieve social change without personal development. As a trainer, coach, and facilitator, Eva's coaching process leads you to discovery, methods, and outcomes that improve and enhance the quality of your personal and professional life. Her coaching process allows you to show up on your A-game at home, at work, and in your communities. So welcome to the podcast, Eva. Well, Peggy, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, I'm excited for our conversation. And so to start off with, can you share a little bit more about you and how it has led you to where you are today? Well, you know, I am a high achiever, which is different from being a high performer. And so I started my adulthood, let's put it that way, which I'm well into, uh, as a dental hygienist. And in the economic downturn that we had, kind of the 2008, 2010 mm -hmm. era, mm -hmm. I found myself um, downsized at my job. And, um, and I was in a panic. And I realized during that time that for me to live the life that I always dreamt of living, I really needed to do something different. And being an employee wasn't going to do it for me. And I stumbled onto real estate investing as a career. And I got training and education and coaches and mentors, because I believe you can't be successful without coaches and mentors right, right. for real estate. However, what was happening at that time as I was working so hard to be successful in real estate and still working my day job, if you will, mm -hmm. that I found myself burnt out, stressed out, overwhelmed and exhausted mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And it affected my mood, my health, and ultimately my relationship with my husband was um, in real danger of getting divorced. There mm -hmm. was betrayal in the marriage. And I knew that I had to take responsibility for my part in that. Mm -hmm. And that was the mindset shift for me and my leadership was that this didn't happen in a silo. I am not a victim. I am an active participant in my life. And that's when I decided, you know, we decided to do the work mm -hmm. to get the help. And for me, it came in the form of high performance, high performance coaching, because I am driven. Mm -hmm. I am a high achiever. And the way I was doing it, the habits that um, I was uh, implementing at the time were contributing to the breakdown and overwhelm in my life. And I knew that there was a better way. And when I discovered high performance and the habits that I could um, implement mm -hmm. consistently so that I could be on my A game, have the energy, not have my family get the the leftover pieces of me at the end of the day, if you yeah. will. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's how I came to high performance and, you know, and my marriage has been saved. Um, I feel healthy, happy. I have the energy mentally, emotionally, and physically to not be operating in a state of constant exhaustion and overwhelm. Mm, yes. So that's my story about oh. high performance. <laughs> well, I mean, I hear a lot of myself in your story about, you know, pushing so hard and trying to do all the things because I, I guess I would probably define myself as a high achiever too. I always feel like I have high expectations, but I would like to know, you know, you, you mentioned the high achiever versus high performance, but you get yours a high per performance coach. So can you tell the, tell us the difference between the high achieving and high performance? You know, my view of high achieving is really being a workaholic. Okay. You know, you are sacrificing your health, you're sacrificing relationships, you're sacrificing your well-being for the people, you, you know, for success. And you're really leaving out the people that you say you're working so hard for, right? You know, how many of us say we're working this hard for, for our, our spouse and our children and our families, and we end up not spending time with our spouse, our children and our families, the yes. people we're working so hard for. And so we're sacrificing the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, success requires sacrifice. But what I find with high achievers, they're sacrificing the wrong things in order to be successful mm -hmm. and have it all. As a high performer, the difference in what you're sacrificing, mm -hmm. you know, your health is your priority. Your well-being is your priority. Your family, your lifestyle is your priority. And you learn to let go of things that don't support or move you closer towards your priorities in life. Mm -hmm. So it's really how to create a both and. 
how to have it all without doing it all. And high achievers want to do it all. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a book, oh gosh, I can't remember the author, but it's called Who Not How. Oh yeah, Dr. Ben Hardy. Yes, and, thank um, you. I yeah, don't know why. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, why I was <laughs> blanking it. on that. Yes, Who Not How. And we as high achievers always want to be the ones doing it all. Mm -hmm. You know, who, who has said, you know, perhaps, if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself and you don't trust anybody to do it yourself and learning how to de delegate so that the how gets done, but you're not always the who in your right. yourself. And you're just putting, you know, the things that you claim you're working so hard for mm -hmm. as the priority. In yeah. Your yeah, that is so true. I mean, that rings so true for me. I mean, it probably we're in the same kind of space. So that makes sense or like personal development and, and, but that, that clear distinction between achieving and performing, like what are you sacrificing? And you don't need to sacrifice the priorities in order to feel good, perform, you know, even achieve at a level. Because I feel like once you get your priorities in straight mm -hmm. and you take care of yourself and well being, you can achieve great things. It's yeah. just in a matter of how you're doing it. Exactly, exactly. I always say success is about being willing to give things up. We think about, you know, um, when we're, you know, you heard the term being ready, willing and able. Mm -hmm. It's never not that it's never that we're not ready, or they're not, or we're not able, we're not willing to give up some of the things we need to give up to be successful in every area of your life. And one of my mentors put it in a way like true success comes when you're doing more of the things that you love to do and less of the things that mm. you love to do. Yes, because isn't that what we're all really striving for is we have this idea of this beautiful life that we want to live and the people that we want to enjoy it with. But half the time we're doing things that don't match that. Yes, yes, yes. You've got to have the vision for your life match the reality of your day-to-day -day life. I call it, you know, what does your perfect average day look like? I have this, this exercise that I do in my workshops with mm -hmm. my clients where I have them take a piece of paper and just write down the state of the union of your life. You know, what is your life like? You know, mm -hmm. what are you, what does the day-to-day -day look, look like for you? Mm -hmm. And then on another blank piece of paper, what would you like it to look like? Yeah. You know, and I remember having a distinct vision of just, I like slow mornings. And I was always rushing to catch a train at quarter to seven to get to work and I didn't spend enough time with the dog. Husband was still asleep, you know, got home exhausted, kind of passed out on the couch. My Netflix ended up me fast asleep in 10 minutes. And I'm like, you know what? I want to have as much energy when I come home, you know, when I finish my work as I do in the mornings. And I mm -hmm. want to have that time in the morning to just walk, meditate, read, work out, whatever it is I want to do, hang mm -hmm. with the doggy, whatever that is. And that was my perfect average day. And so when you look at what you have on the one blank sheet of paper of mm -hmm. the state of the affairs now and what you want it to look like, you've got to look at what you're willing to give up mm -hmm. to get from Mm -hmm. sheet, sheet A to sheet B, if you will. Right, right. So success is really about giving up scrolling, giving up, you know, that habit of procrastination. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got a dream and you've got a, a goal and a plan to get to that perfect average day and you're wondering why it's taking so long, mm -hmm. what can you cut out yeah. to get there yeah. faster? And most of us high achievers, we just keep adding more and more and more. <laughs> Shiny object. Oh, that's a good idea. Let me try that. And let me try that me squirrel squirrel <laughs> yeah I know I'm laughing because that's me I mean I have all these brilliant ideas and it's just like wait a minute focus focus what was that what was that what main was thing that I was <laughs> yes. and so you talked about habits now we can have you know you talked about your habits that got you into like being overwhelmed and like run down burned out and stuff but then there's also you talked about habits that you can create of letting things go so that you can live that life that you really want to live so what are the differences between habits you know i look at habits that generate energy okay no we don't have energy we generate energy so what habits give you that energy to be on your a game so that you can have clarity 
to be on your A game so that you have the influence skills to show up as your best self. To me, that's your A game. You know, mm -hmm. like you're on point, you're on purpose, you're fired up, you're getting things done, mm -hmm. you're being effective. And I use effective in place of productive because productive sometimes sounds heavy. Yeah. You know, I <laughs> see like an assembly line. We're producing this many widgets a day. Like, but you, know, if, you, really but be you might not be effective at doing it, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Okay. You want to make your time and your energy and your money you know, have a high return on investment. Mm -hmm. because, and so energy, you know, how is my sleep? Hmm. Mm -hmm. How is, am I eating for fuel or am I eating to satisfy hunger because I'm hangry and now I'm cranky and now I'm throwing the first thing in my mouth to kind of satisfy that blood sugar crash. Um, you know, how am I taking care of my brain? How am I taking care of my body? What habits do I need to practice consistently so that I show up my best. I mean, you think about um, racing, car racing, right? Mm -hmm. Those are some high performance machines. Yeah. And you see those cars racing around the track at dangerously high speeds, trying to get to the finish line, hopefully win the race without crashing and burning. And I remember I would see the, the lead car pull over for a pit stop and think, oh, oh my God, they're going to lose. People are going to pass them up because they stopped yeah. for a pit stop when it didn't look like anything was wrong with the car. Mm -hmm. But those drivers know how necessary a pit stop is proactively to keep running at peak or high performance, if you will, mm -hmm. so that they don't crash and burn. You know, imagine how we take care of our bodies. Mm -hmm. We don't stop for a pit stop until we're out of gas. Yeah. Um, until the tire goes flat. You know, something happens with our health and our mm -hmm. doctors make mm -hmm. us stop. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to create habits like those pit stops throughout our day. Yeah, I mean, all day, every day that generate energy. So mm -hmm. the first thing that goes in my calendar is a habit of lunch. I mean, how many of us eat real quick, sit at our desk, skip lunch, do something fast? I take an hour lunch with my dog. Because <laughs> yeah, I work from home and we'll either go sit outside or, we'll, you know, or I'll just do something to stimulate my brain. But I make mm -hmm. sure that I don't schedule anything through lunch. I have a morning routine. You know, I need to walk, get fresh air, move my body mm -hmm. so that I have energy throughout the day. And I never, ever, ever, and this is for anybody listening, schedule appointments back to back to back. Mm. It's always a 15 minute buffer in my schedule so that I can refill yeah. my water glass so I don't do one of those big jars. <laughs> <laughs> I have to literally get up, go downstairs, get water. That's movement. Mm -hmm. um, I have to, you know, I move my body. Sometimes I just sit in two to three minutes, just silent meditation or something like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But I want to just keep my body running like a well-oiled machine. And that's yeah. mentally, emotionally, and physically. So those are high performance habits. I just threw a few of them out there for right. you that help you, you know, show up as your best self because we all know how we feel when we're tired and cranky and hungry mm -hmm. and people are getting that part of us because maybe the client before us got on our last nerve and we didn't reset and re-energize for the next mm -hmm. client so we're carrying that energy over you know whatever whatever it takes for you and mm -hmm. it's different for everybody but you've got to have these these pit stops i call it routines throughout right. your day right and i and i and i view those pit stops as what popped into my head was preventative maintenance, you know, is it prevents, uh, something bad from happening. You know, those racers, those race car drivers, they go in for a pit stop before the tire blows Yes, <laughs> before they run out of gas, you know, before, you know, they get hydrated, they can go. So, so they can just keep running, like you said, at high performance levels. So you can maintain that energy and be able to give your best to the next person that you're showing up for. Yes, yes. And, and what you're talking about a lot is self-care and we all just like kind of blow off self-care, but yet if we really think about it, our life really does make a difference when we get good sleep. I know for me, I mean, I had one of those nights last week and I was like, that I couldn't sleep. I had a terrible time sleeping the next two days. Awful. Yes, yes. You know, the energy that we show up with is literally a result of what happened two days ago. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> really? and I know somebody had said like the 72 hour period, I think it was Bre Brendan Bichardo was listening to something of his mm -hmm. and it was like 72 hours. And it's just like, and it was almost like clockwork. 
Yeah. It was like almost 72 it, hours. He's my minute. coach and mentor. <laughs> it's funny you should mention him. Yes. yes. Brendan has trained me at high performance. So I'm a certified high performance coach through him. And he has this three, two, one formula that you probably heard him speak yeah. of to get good sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No food three hours before bed. No work two hours before bed. And no screens one hour before bed. And that's how you power your body computer down your brain really so that you can get that good deep restorative sleep every night yeah and I hear people say like well what are you supposed to do for that hour before going to bed then you know they make books out of paper these days still I love books out of paper <laughs> books out of paper or you can um, I I always read that's when I you know true confession here people magazine is how I wind down my day I want to see fashion I want to see recipes mm -hmm. I want to look at jewelry skincare products and yes a celebrity gossip <laughs> so I admit it that relaxes me yeah that's what's in my head I love listening to books to learn and that's what I do that's part of my morning routine that sets mm -hmm. me up to win the day mm -hmm. but to power myself down that last hour in bed is reading a magazine or reading a book out of paper so I have that stack next to my bed it's like okay mm -hmm. what am I in the mood for and before you know it reading makes me sleepy because my body is um wired that way and so before you know it I'm dozing off on it turn the light out and I'm gone and that's it <laughs> till six seven in the morning six o'clock in the morning so yeah. I'm getting that eight hours and I wear I wear this watch now to see how much of it is deep sleep mm, because yes. that is the real restorative one and I'm like right. yes as long as I get 90 minutes of deep restorative sleep I feel like I, I've set myself up to win the day yeah there's so many tools out there to help us yes. help us win the day and like you mentioned you know uh, the watch to, to be able to get you know that restorative sleep do you know how if you if you didn't have a watch like how how would somebody be able to tell how restorative their sleep was do you know? I think it's based how you feel. If you can wake up automatically feeling refreshed and ready to go, mm -hmm. that's how you feel. Like I know now um, I don't handle alcohol the way I used to mm -hmm. um, postmenopausally. So I know if I've had a glass of wine, I just feel it while I'm sleeping, a little headachey. It's like a low grade headache. Mm -hmm. And I wake up, you know, my eyes are not fully focused. I, I can tell the difference. And I told my husband, you know, it's like, I don't think I can have a glass of wine with dinner anymore. That's yeah. just not working with me because I get much better sleep without it where I wake mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. and I can tell just by my head feels personally yeah. for you, but maybe something else. Right. And I'm just really clear and focused and my thoughts are already, okay, this is what I need to do today. <laughs> this is what I've got to figure right. out. And I just wake up ready to go yeah. and do my walk, get my fresh air um, and for my body. But, you know, it's funny sometimes my morning routine changes and mm -hmm. I just listen to what my body needs. Yeah. Yeah. So I that just bring really up a really good point because what I've been hearing a lot is like the self-awareness. Yes. Like being aware of your body, being in tune with your body, realizing what affects something else. And yeah. that's a, that's a good skill. That's, I mean, that's like the number one skill I think people need to learn, you know, to, to know about themselves, but to also do better, to perform better, to achieve more, whatever is they have to be in tune to themselves, to be self-aware. Yeah. Do you teach people how to do that? Or does that come naturally or? I think it's a both. And, you know, like whether you have a spouse or a partner, you know, when they're cranky, mm -hmm. there's a look on their face or their reaction to something. And I know with, with my own husband, I would be like, you're upset about something, huh? Or somebody got on your, like, I, right. You know, we read other people that are close to us, right? Mm -hmm. If you have children, you know, when your teenager is hungry, because all of a sudden it, the sound of your breath is upsetting to them. Like, why are you breathing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's get you something to eat. <laughs> Feed the monster, feed the monster. Feed the monster, <laughs> feed the monster. And so you get in tune with yourself. Like you notice, you know, if I were to go and not not let my blood sugar dip, mm -hmm. but just keep it steady all day, I'm performing my best all day. Mm -hmm. But if I let too long go without eating, mm -hmm. or maybe I didn't eat something enough that satiated me for the hours I needed it to be. So I've yeah. like up my protein and things like that. You know, for me, it shows up in lack of patience. 
I'm not as patient and understanding and open as I know I can be Mm -hmm. when I'm feeling Mm -hmm. good. Yeah. And so, you know, but you've got to be willing to be in tune with yourself and learn what works. And one of the things I do with all of my clients is I have them take uh, what I call a relationship style assessment. Now, it's not about relationships as we know them romantic, but it's Mm -hmm. basically how you relate to other people. And there are five different relationship styles seeks to please. And I did an acronym with style. So you have your S seeks to please T tries to control Mm -hmm. Y is a yo-yo back and forth between um, expectations and disappointments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. L is looks to accept blame. So we're always kind of blaming ourselves for everything. Mm -hmm. And then E is evading evader you know evading emotions you Mm -hmm. know running away from problems running away from feelings so those are the five core styles Mm -hmm. and once you've identified your style you'll know what well where it was born at what point in your childhood did you develop that style as a way to soothe some anxiety or Mm -hmm. protect yourself or a reaction to something and how is it showing up in your adult life so i'll give you my example i'm a yo-yo which means that I have such high expectations of myself and others that when those expectations aren't met, Mm -hmm. I get really disappointed and my disappointment manifests as anger. Ah, yeah. I get mad at myself. I get mad at other people. Why did you do Mm -hmm. it this way? And I'm really talking about the old me. So please don't think I still do this. Um, You recognize it. You move through it. Yeah. Well, I had to learn this about myself. I didn't always know it. And mm-hmm. uh, and when I did the research and then developed the assessment, I was like, oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see it. I see it. And so for me, it could show up, you know, when I'm disappointed, I get angry, I get um, impatient, mm-hmm. uh, like all the things. So I have to know myself. Yeah. And so, you know, I had a dear friend tell me once, you know, I was like, I'm always praying for more patience. She's like, you don't magically get patient but you get opportunities to practice being patient. I'm like, that explains it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when I see, when the opportunities come for me to practice patience, I'm grateful, but I'm also I'm like, okay, Eva, who do you need to be? Mm-hmm. What would your best self do in this situation? And I really talk myself, I really coach myself through these things. Like, okay, what do I need to do to show up as my best self when I really want to punch somebody in the face right now? <laughs> <laughs> and they're or, done that walk, oh have walk a away in a base, tiff but... you know I walk away in a tiff and like okay you know you don't know what this person is going through right. just just assume the best right just assume the best because we always like to assume the worst don't we right 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 mm-hmm. yeah and so when we're trying to like the self-aware piece and trying to understand what you know our style our relationship style we really kind of like you talked about we can read other people Mm-hmm. And it, it is so hard. We have to look at ourselves and how we are responding. So we almost have to like, look at ourselves in the mirror as a different person. Like that is that third person over there. That's okay. What, what kind of facial expressions do we have when we're like this? You know, like when we're having those high expectations and then disappointed, you know, um, mm-hmm. what does that look like? Can- oh yeah. Yeah. I know the face I get, <laughs> <laughs> you know, thanks to zoom. We see ourselves so much more now than we ever did before. And I love that you brought that up because I've been working on my face because people used to like message me. Are you okay? You don't, I'm like, no, that's how I look when I'm listening to people. I get an Elvis lip. I don't know what it is, (laughs) but the lip goes up. (laughs) really funny. It's really funny. Well, we do. I mean, and, and we don't really notice it ourselves until somebody else points it out. But oftentimes people don't want to let us know some of those things Mm -hmm. that could benefit the relationship a little bit, Mm -hmm. but they're just not wanting to uh, stroke the fire or stroke the monster and see what happens. So it's, but that, that whole education of ourselves, just becoming more self-aware, getting in tune with ourselves. And you, you know, that's, are we hungry? You know, what do we need? Do we need more sleep? How does this affect us? So all of these things can be better habits that we can have by just focusing a little bit more on ourselves yeah. and and we're not doing anybody things. any favors by um not taking care of ourselves yeah. <laughs> yes yeah. yes so how then you know you talked about overwhelm before mm-hmm. and we can 
set ourselves up for generating some good energy with some good habits to perform better, but there still could be a chance that we can get overwhelmed with a lot of stuff, correct? Yeah, yeah. overwhelm is the enemy of excellence, mm. for sure, for sure. And I think, you know, this may strike people in the wrong way, but I think overwhelm is a choice. Overwhelm is a choice. Um, I, I had this philosophy, I was always quoting Richard Branson, that mm -hmm. when someone um offers you an amazing opportunity and you're not sure you can do it say yes anyway and figure it out um later and I think Shonda Rhimes wrote a book called uh, yes or she was saying yes to everything so there's all of this culture of saying yes 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 mm -hmm. yes and there's an end to that because I always prided myself in being the one to say yes to everything and so now I ask myself this question because I love challenges. I love saying yes to things. I love trying new things, but I don't love being overwhelmed. And so when I'm clear about what my priorities are, I have the CPR formula. When I click clear, the first one is getting clear mm -hmm. about, and the P is priorities, getting clear about who I am, how I want to show up, um, mm -hmm. what I want in life, the purpose, all of that. And then prioritizing my days my weeks, my months, and my years, mm -hmm. and getting clear, like I live by a paper calendar, everything's in my Google calendar, but mm -hmm. it's all transferred on paper, in case the internet goes out or whatever, I can look down and I can see at a glance. Mm -hmm. And then I have, by the end of day today, these are the things that I want to accomplish. Now, let's say this amazing opportunity that I think comes. Mm -hmm. And I know I set a clear goal for 2024 for myself. And I ask myself, is this opportunity going to move me closer to my priorities mm. or is it going to take me further away mm -hmm. from my priorities? And if it takes me further away, it's not a no forever. Mm -hmm. It's a no, not now. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I'm sorry if you, you know, if you came and asked me for a favor and I'm that type of pleaser person, I'm like, I don't want to think, but think I'm a bad person because I didn't help them do this right. X, Y, and Z, or I'm not there for them. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I would love to do that. However, you know, I don't have room in my schedule today. Mm -hmm. What about next Tuesday at four? You know, so you look at mm -hmm. not as a no forever. I mean, if right. it doesn't support anything that you want to do, then it can be a no forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. but you know what? You should call Peggy. That's right up her alley. Let me make the introduction for you. Right. You know, right. it's like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I have no problem saying, oh, wow, that's not aligned with my priorities at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that and starts so with that clear vision of yes. what you want to be mm -hmm. and to have that in place. So you can constantly look at how you want to feel, what you want to accomplish, how you want to relate with people, you know, what, and then those priorities of how that we're going to work in there. And, it, and then it's good because I think a lot of people think it's like, oh, if I say no, you know, I'm going to be like, I, I'm, I'm mean or something, or it is. No, ever ask me us. again. Mine was just like, nobody will come back to me with that opportunity ever again in my entire life. <laughs> I don't want, I have FOMO, like you wouldn't believe FOMO is strong. But when I, when I created kind of my CPR to high performance, to jumpstart it, it's clarities, priorities, and responsibilities. Mm. We talked about being clear. We talked about priorities. You know, studies show when you're not clear on your priorities, you're up to 30 times more likely to miss out on your on success. Oh, I bet. It shows that. And so the R is responsibility for creating and setting boundaries that protect your priorities, your vision, mm -hmm. goals, and values. So you've got to build a fortress around your priorities so that yeah. nobody can break through right. and distract you. Yeah. And when you're talking about like all these opportunities and things like, you know, and I, I mentioned earlier, it's like, oh yeah, I have all these great ideas too. Right. So I started making a list of them and just mm -hmm. like keeping them in a place yeah. and those opportunities too are still there. Like you could write them down. Like I could write down these different opportunities and review them as life continues. It's like, do they mm -hmm. still fit? Is right. this right the time, right? Is it clear now? Is it going to fit into my priorities and you know, responsible? You know, do I have the boundaries in place that I could take this on? And so I feel like those ideas come to you. Don't discard them and, and don't feel like they're not there forever. Like they're going to be gone forever, but they still could come back around. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have a, a brain dump notebook next to my bed. Mm, yeah. Things that are on my mind that will keep me from getting good sleep. Mm -hmm. But once I write them down, it's like, because I'm of the generation that learned how to write, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we but know how to I do get them out of my everything. <laughs> Once I get them out of my head and on paper, I, I, I'm i good. But one of the the things that my husband and I have gotten to the habit of is we we have a end of year business meeting, mm. usually in Cabo or someplace nice. Oh, and, that's nice. Um, and we write down, you know, we discuss our goals for our business. We own a real estate investment company together. Um, and we also get clear on our personal goals. Mine has been very health orientated um, mm -hmm. these days. And he's got like bike challenges and things he wants wants to do. And we write them down. And so I always have them in front of me so mm -hmm. that when I do get these opportunities, I'm like, is this matching? And I'm looking up at them now. Yeah. Is it matching what we want to do? Because I get such satisfaction. I'm mm, across yeah. the offer. Oh, that's good. Did that. Done that. Crossed it yeah. off. But I don't want anything to... Um, pull me away mm -hmm. from what I said my 2024 was going to be. So if there's an opportunity that, oh, this is going to support that. This is going to give me more learning in that. This right. is going to give me more connection right. to that. I know what to say yes to mm -hmm. based on getting clear on how I want the year to go. That doesn't mean that it's set in blood and I may figure out halfway through the journey, like I didn't want to really want to drive to New Jersey. Yeah. I'd rather go to Boston. <laughs> I just need the course correct, right? Right, right, right. And we have that opportunity, right? It's our, it's, yeah. it's it because we don't know everything right now. And as life evolves, some things might come into play. Some other priorities might, uh, you know, jump ahead of some other ones. Yeah. Um, so life will, well, life will be lifing. And so mm -hmm. the whole point is to set up your energy so that you're able to handle whatever comes your way and it doesn't knock you for a loop and, right, and right. knock you out just you might get knocked down but you've got the energy to get back up and redirect and keep going yes yes oh my gosh this has been so good I like so many good gems come out of this and you know your relationship styles your CPR you know your clear prioritizing and your re um, your responsibilities all of this stuff has been so good just a reminder to us that just the healthy habits you know taking being aware of ourselves and how we can win the day by taking care of ourselves and doing those things that we need to. But how can pe people find out more about you and, and be coached by you? How can they find out? Yeah, well, on my website is my name, evametalek.com. But if you want to have a conversation about um, anything that we talk about here, just go to talkwitheva.com and then you'll get right in my calendar. And I would love to to speak with anybody about what may be coming up for them. And it's a no obligation. It's not a salesy call, but, um, you know, if I feel that I could help you, you know, I totally would make you an offer. And if I feel that I can't, you're going to leave with something valuable to get yourself started either way. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. So as we wrap up today, is there one thought or quote that you would like to leave the listeners with? Yes. I would say that real gratitude for life comes with time management. Mm. And then time, you know, this this a quote I love from Jen Sincero is time comes to those who make it, mm. not to those who try to find it. Because a lot of what you hear when you're talking to people, I don't have the time to eat right. out. I don't have the time to work out. I don't have the time to do X, Y, and Z. I don't have the time to sleep more than five or six hours. And so really look at your time management. You mm -hmm. have you know, you're not going to find the time, but you get to prioritize making the time. Yes. And I was just, just add that, that is just highlight that you can prioritize your time so mm -hmm. you can make whatever is a priority to you somewhere in your time. You can make time for that. And if you say, I don't have the time, I want you to switch your language. That's not a priority for me. Mm. I don't have the time to do that right now. And a lot of times it's true. It's not a priority yeah. for you. Yeah. But if you say about your health, I don't have time to take care of my health. If you say my health is not a priority to me, that's a more accurate description for you not making the time to prioritize your health. So right. Be real. Let's not sugarcoat it. No. Say it as it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today, Eva. There's so many good gems and I'm so glad that you joined me and the listeners have gotten so much from this. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too.